We've got some Broncos injury news to get to today. And I'm talking good injury news. So I'm excited to share that with all of you guys watching. But first, we are 39 subscribers away from 9,000 here on the channel. So Broncos country, let's ride and subscribe. Welcome into the Broncos Breakdown by Chat Sports. Matthew Peterson here breaking down all of the latest Broncos news because they have made a handful of moves from practice squad to IR to signing and bringing back some guys. And of all that, we still have some injury updates to get to. But let's start things off by looking at what's the preliminary Broncos practice squad. They've still got some names to fill out, but there are some notable names returning to mile high. Josh Johnson, Kendall Hinton, probably the two biggest names that jump out right there. I, for one, was surprised that Kendall Hinton was cut yesterday. Happy to see him come back on the practice squad. Darius Shepard, remember that was the first guy they signed after Tim Patrick's injury. He's back on the practice squad as well. And then Devine, ooh, Devine Ozigbo, the running back who they picked up just last week. He shined in the preseason finale, earning a practice squad spot. Dylan Parham, UDFA tight end. And then Natane Moody. I thought he was going to make the 53-man roster. I mean, for crying out loud, we were talking about this guy starting a month ago. And then in a bit of a surprising move, he gets cut, but he's back on the practice squad along with Quinn Bailey. McTelvin Ajim, the former third-round pick out of Arkansas who... Some would say it was a surprise. I kind of saw it coming personally. I didn't have him on my Broncos 53-man roster projection. He was cut as well. Jonathan Harris and then Kanai Maga, another UDFA. And to round it out, we've got Jonathan Kongbo, Jaquan McMillian, and Fayon Hicks, the seventh-round pick out of Wisconsin. Now, there are still three more open practice squad spots, so keep an eye on that. We'll break that down as that news comes to us over here. But that's how the Broncos practice squad looks for now. So let's get on to the injury side of today's show. But first, I want to share this quick tweet here because I thought this was pretty cool from Mike Kliss on Josh Johnson. He's signing on to the Broncos practice squad, and he's going to be making about $300,000. I mean, we always joke that being a backup quarterback is the dream job. But imagine making three hundred k. And all you got to do is just show up to practice a couple times a week and run the scout team defense. I know Josh Johnson would love to be on this roster, and he's tired of being the taxi man, practice squad QB. But hey, making 300 k to do that, it's not a bad living right there. Now, we've only got 13 names so far, but I'm curious. Who is your favorite player on the Broncos practice squad? Is it Kendall Hinton, a future Hall of Famer, no doubter? Maybe McTelvin Ajim or Josh Johnson. Whoever it is, let me know in the comments section below. Now, we've got some good injury news to get to here. Randy Gregory and Billy Turner were cleared for contact today. This is a very good step in the right direction to seeing them suit up week one at Seattle. I expect them to be able to play Gregory more so than Turner. Turner with that knee injury is a little bit more of a question mark because it's kind of been a hidden knee injury, right? He failed his physical with Green Bay, and since then we've all just been waiting for him to return. Whereas Randy Gregory has been more on the right path this whole time. Coming off shoulder and off-season knee injury, uh, surgeries, he has been making his progressions to get back on the field. Great signs there. Tyree Cleveland also clear to practice today. Full contact for him. And then Jonas Griffith was seen to the sideline working out individually. He's still working himself back from that preseason week one elbow injury. I thought this tweet from Andrew Mason, though, on Tyree Cleveland was pretty cool. Probably my favorite tweet of the day. Wanted to share it with you guys. Tyree Cleveland was on a liquid slash soft food diet after he got that throat injury. His first meal after recovering, raising canes. He said he is cleared for full practice today and expects to play in Seattle. So it kind of got me wondering, if you were in Tyree Cleveland's shoes and you were working off milkshakes and smoothies for three to four weeks, what would be your first meal? I think Raising Cane's is an awesome first pick right there. Producer Patrick, what are we thinking here? Wingstop? Wingstop's good too. Let me know what you would go down below. All right, let's move on to some more news here. The Denver Broncos official Twitter account... Finally announcing what we all sort of saw coming. 
which was the return of Mike Purcell and Eric Tomlinson once they put Greg Dulcich and Michael Ojemudia on short-term IR. This was just procedural, right? But someone had to, you know, be the victim here, right? Someone had to fall on their sword for a little bit and be a free agent for 18 hours until they can make this move official. An agreement is always worked out with veterans where they say, hey, we're going to cut you. Don't sign anywhere else. We're bringing you back tomorrow afternoon. Just stay put here. So with the Broncos placing Ojemudia and Greg Dulcich on, on, our, on IR, that cleared the two roster spots to bring back Tomlinson and um, Mike Purcell, which was always a bit of a question mark, especially for Purcell with that salary cap number that they could clear. Ultimately, they decide, let's bring back some veteran presence on our defensive line. Now, George Payton had some interesting quotes yesterday I wanted to share with all of you. Purcell and Tomlinson, big part of what we're doing. Mike is one of those core guys. We didn't play him in the preseason. They are going to be here. They're doing a favor for the team. They're taking one for the team. And so with Mike Purcell returning to the 53-man roster, here is what the defensive line depth chart looks like for the Broncos. Yesterday, it had five names. Now it has six names with Purcell joining Williams and the Joneses, Henningsen, and Wazurike. So I like this because the Broncos' defensive line last year was often all bark, no bite, right? You never really saw them penetrate the offensive line and make their presence known. Although Purcell could have saved a bit of coin, ultimately, I've got no issue with them bringing back an extra piece of depth in case of an injury. Now, let's look at the tight end room here because Greg Dulcich was placed on short-term IR, which means him and Ojemudia can return after four weeks. And we got some interesting quotes from Peyton here, but Greg Dulcich has been sidelined for quite some time with a bit of a mysterious hamstring injury. We know what the injury is. We just never got many updates on the recovery and when we can expect to see him back on the field. Now, here's what George Payton said on Dulcich. He was really close to coming back. Then he tweaked it. I wouldn't call it a setback, but he just can't get over that hump. He thinks he can probably be ready maybe in a week or two, but I've said this a number of times. We want to protect him for himself, so we're going to do that. We're going to take the conservative route. Which, like we, which we like to do with these types of injuries. He's going to help us win a lot of football games this year. He'll be ready after those four games are up. So let's send some good vibes to not only to Ojemudia, but also to the rookie, Greg Dulcich. Type his jersey number 80 down below in the comments section. That way he knows Broncos country is thinking of him and wants to see him back on the gridiron as soon as possible. Let's take a deeper dive, though, at Billy Turner and Randy Gregory. So Turner missed not only all three preseason games, but all of OTAs, a mandatory mini camp, and a good bulk of training camp before he was taken off the pup list. Is he on track to play week one? It's not definitive. It's definitely a good sign of progress of him being cleared for full contact today, as Mike Kliss po points out here that Randy Gregory and Billy Turner return. But... Just because you are cleared for contact doesn't mean you are a shoe in to play week one. It's often a sign of, let's see where you're at, right? Let's see how you go and how you fare in full speed 11 on 11. Here's what George Payton said on Billy Turner. I'm encouraged with Billy and the strides he's taken the last couple of weeks. I know he wants to play. That's his goal. If not, we feel good with our depth. I think Billy is right on track. Let's take a closer look at that last little bit, the depth part of the quote from George Payton. Calvin Anderson right now is the scheduled week one starter at right tackle. Cam Fleming is going to be that sixth man until Billy Turner returns. And then if Turner gets his old job back, Calvin Anderson will take over Fleming's role. But for now, the Broncos have nine offensive linemen, three pretty versatile tackles between Anderson, Turner, and Fleming. None of which are just long-term options, in my opinion, but they can get the job done for the time being, knock on wood. Now, as for Randy Gregory, if he is back week one, it's going to be hopefully a fun duo between him and Bradley Chubb for the first time since at least Chubb's rookie year 2018, coming in, right, free bill of health. I mean, no hurdles to get over, no preseason or training camp setbacks. 
or anything like that. And it's a stacked room, in my opinion. Nick Benito, Jonathan Cooper, Baron Browning, Aaron Patrick for special teams. If all these guys are firing on the same cylinder, it's going to be a very difficult pass rush to stop for opposing offensive lines. All right, before we send you guys on your way, if you like today's show, make sure you click that subscribe button and join nearly 9,000 strong we've got here at the channel. I appreciate all of you guys for watching. And hey, if you made it to the end of the video, give me a let's ride down in the comments.